do you think it's possible to get a big chunk of humanity to push along with that mission? In other words, not the employees of X, but the users of X, the people who are like, because it seems like that's what Elon wants. Is he, He's saying like, I want to have this free speech platform where that is primary and I want humanity to be better because of this. And, and in a sense, you get that same mm. as other companies too. But but yeah, but there, you know, at, at another company, there's a very careful screening process. My understanding is that the hiring process is intense at Tesla and probably SpaceX and these other places yes. too. But but so you don't have that with people who are using X because obviously anybody can do it, can can you know join, you can sign up. But do you feel like it's a potential? Like, is it a possibility that this location, this 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 app? could become the thing that actually helps humanity in general better itself? Or is that just impossible with that many people? <laughs> that is a fascinating connection because I, I, I think that's kind of what's happening from a, like if I were to say, how, how has Elon and the leadership teams that his companies figure out how to implement a culture where people want to be their best selves and yeah, really, yeah. Uh, reach a point where they're fulfilling their, they're, they're just as 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 content and as happy as they can be through hard work and a meritocracy, right? Right. Um, that culture very much exists for the user base in X in a way, where it's kind of like, okay, freedom of speech is the, um, it's no like I I view the analogy there is very similar to the culture at Tesla where we. <laughs> Elon's not a God or a president or nothing, but he's yeah. created a scenario where he's like, okay, freedom of speech means that I trust you. Like, yeah. Hey, here you go. Like if you think about what is, what is not freedom of speech? So what is like a, a content moderation or a demonetization tool from another a media site? It's right. a thing that says, I don't trust, I don't trust that you're doing yeah. the right thing yeah, yeah. based on my rules. Right? Uh, like I am putting an additional layer on top of the law because I don't trust you. That's right. literally what, uh, uh, demonetization and content moderation is and, and yanking content. That's right. what that is. And so in X, it's like, okay, gates are open. Here you go. We trust you right here. <laughs> there's still rules like, Hey, you can't copy people at work. You can't hire people to freaking monetize, like click like yeah. you can't pay people to click likes <laughs> for you. Right. There are still right. very basic rules that still have to be followed, but the, the amount of, um, the amount of layers of bureaucracy that are analogous to say a corporation where it prevents you from getting promoted or getting recognized or being noticed or being listened to, those are yanked out uh, as much as possible from the user base at X. Right. And then the monetization variable is okay. Here's the, here's the carrot. Here's the incentive right. for you to uh, feel empowered is like, right. Hey, the more you do this, the more money you make, the right. more um, the more the system rewards you for putting stuff out there for other people to see. Right. Now, one could one could say that once you get ad folks involved, you have you create a scenario where you know the if the ad people don't really like what you say, then they choose not to monetize what you're saying, which creates a a, a weird sort of scenario there, which I think needs to be talked about. Right. But at the very least. Once X reaches its sort of goal of becoming a platform where they're not just a media company, but they're also a financial services company, which means that they have a diversification of income streams, which means that they're less reliant on ad folks for profit, right. which means that they don't really have them by the, you know, by the, you know, what, <laughs> then in theory, you've removed a lot of the negative, like the dis disincentives that would be on a, on a, on a creator or a person to uh hold their tongue or to say things or or to only say things that uh certain people might find uh, uh appropriate right? right so i i, I think there is and, and i'm just thinking out loud because i what you said really resonates with me because if i think about like creating on x some of the vibes i get are similar from working at tesla okay i, I do because i'm surrounded by really i really think x has the biggest collection of smartest people right. out of any social media platform where the voices are at the forefront. You know, right. even if I disagree with them a hundred percent of the time, I yeah. can still tell, tell these are well-meaning intelligent people. Yeah. And I, 
I see that on X a lot, whereas the other media platforms are much more geared towards entertainment and sort of like uh, pleasing the algorithm, you know, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a, it's a different vibe. It's a different vibe. It feels, it feels a little bit more, it speaks deeper to me from a perspective of keeping me engaged and making me feel like I'm part of something that's bigger than what I'm just working on. It's like, we're part of like a group of people that are working towards something. So I don't know. I don't know if it's going to make society better, but I I will tell you that the mechanisms and incentive structure that Elon has put in place with X to me feel correct. And it just has to run its natural course because if you lay out the proper foundation and the proper incentives, all you really need is time. It's like no different than, again, the analogy is there. It's no different than making the model three and all you need is time to scale up. It's no different than building the AI thing that teaches a car how to drive. And all you need is time plus compute power, which is right. twice the time because you have yeah. to buy them and they have to come in yeah. <laughs> uh, to ramp up those things. And with X, it's the same thing. You've put in the base layer stuff in place. You've cut down the staff by 80%. So you only have the people that you need to have the proper culture set in place. And then you start ramping. You still ramp. You start ramping the feature set. You start ramping the incentives for people to create. And then over time, as more and more people see the value and are rewarded uh, from that system, then it should be a flywheel, some sort of feedback mechanism that will make that system stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where it just becomes the the largest in the world. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I totally agree. Sorry, with you. that was I think a those ramble. Are, no, no, those are great bad. insights. I I'm going <laughs> to add just one little piece to that, which is that the I think there's an analogy to the hiring process. Obviously, much lower bar, much lower bar, but that you have to pay like eight bucks a month. That, that that is kind of analogous to the hiring process. It's like if you really want your voice to be heard on X, you need to be a verified uh, you know member of the community. And in order to do that, you have to put your money where your mouth is. Uh, which, you know, like I said, is not anything like being hired at a, any company, much less skin Tesla. in the game. Yeah, it's skin in the game. You have skin in the game, you have put in some money and and it's like okay so it may not be a massive amount of money but i think that people really freaked out about that and said you're this is the worst idea ever and all this stuff and i was like no this is brilliant because it gets rid of the bots and all that kind of crap but it also means that if if you really want reach you need to put some money in behind it and if you want the check mark you got to be willing to be verified and all that stuff so that there's a it really helps people. Again, I, I think what you said, feeling like we're all kind of on a mission to make things better on X is the main reason that I enjoy being there. It's yeah. it's like, these are smart people. These are well-meaning people. And yeah, I, I vehemently disagree with some of the stuff people say, but that's fine. I mean, <laughs> I, I if I'm yeah. only agreeing with everybody all the time, then I'm not really learning anything because it's like, whatever. Um, so that's great. I mean, sometimes I, I vehemently disagree and then I'm like, oh, you know what? They actually have a point. So I'll, I'll think about that. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. And I'm not going to even get into politics about specifics, but the U.S. election that's coming up oh, yeah. already, you know, as soon as... Cha-ching! <laughs> yeah, well, cha-ching for X. But I mean, it's going to be a very interesting litmus test. How yeah. do the conversations on X go? Do we still have civil discourse but at the same time, do you hear from people that you disagree with, right? Because the other thing you don't want to be is like the echo chamber. Like Facebook has a tendency to be correct echo chamber. And so you only hear from the exact people that you agree with. And that's not, it's it's more comfortable, but it's not helpful. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's a fascinating observation. I agree with you. I think that is going to be a fantastic litmus test. And I encourage, if anybody from X, are you going to post this on X? I'm assuming part yeah, of this oh, is going I'm, to be. I'm posting yeah, every cool. single video on X now too, as well as. Great. So, yeah. Yeah, I would encourage everybody at X to really, to really ensure that it doesn't turn into the echo chamber thing, because then you, X will just be like every other platform. The reason why I enjoy being on X is because every day I get challenged. My my worldview yeah. gets challenged, yeah. and um, I do that on purpose. It's uncomfortable, right? You know, so like the the last person I want to hear from is Robert Reich, you know, yeah. s- saying something that I'm like, what the hell you just say, bro? But I still follow him because I want to be challenged and I'm sure he's a great guy. And I'm sure if him and I were hanging out, we would have a beer or, you know, whatever preference of drink he has. And then we'll just have a good time. And then I'd be like, wow, I really disagree with you, but you're kind of a cool dude. So that I think having that is very, very important, extremely important uh, for us to heal, to really heal as a, as a, 
if I'm going to use the word nation as a nation to really get back to sort of the ideals that say, you know, we are, we are, this country works because we're all different <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. because we're tolerant of each other. We don't have to agree, but at least we're tolerant. And the last thing we want to become is a society of intolerance. And that's what echo chambers are. And that's why uh, getting yourself in a bubble is, you know, that's why I, I follow certain people that are Tesla Q. That's why I follow people that, uh, only talk about negative things about Tesla because right. I know I have a natural bias towards something, but I continually force myself to be outside of that bubble. And right. I, and it's such a healthy exercise. And uh, part of me says though, John, I do think most people are like that already. I, I, I will tell you, I think, I think a like 50 to 80% of the population I really believe is like that. Maybe even more that they're right. very open-minded. It just so happens that the, that the fringes, on either side because they're so passionate yeah they will take to a social media platform and speak their mind no different than what i do about the positive things that are happening with tesla or self-driving right. or evs i'm passionate about those things so that's why i'm there yeah. you know yeah. like the middle person is not really going to be on x talking about how great fsd version 12 is right. but uh you know but but I, I'm encouraged by that point. I really do think we're going to be okay. But um, but maybe I'm wrong, and I hope I'm not. <laughs>